Hey, we're so glad you're here with us this gorgeous Sunday morning. And we'd like you to join us on our first sing-along song, so please rise and sing along with our quartet up here with the Rick Dale original song, I Am Enough. And the hips go this way first. <laughs> Knowledge 
action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. As practitioner Joanne Leone lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. And please join me in prayer. And let's know together that, that that power and that presence that is right here and right now in this moment is operating in through and as each one of us. It is love, it is peace, it is joy, it is harmony, it is wholeness, creativity, and it is working through and as each one of us. Because we are its extension, we are its expression. Each one of us, in our unique way, is that one. And because we are one with it, we are one with each other, we celebrate our oneness with life, our oneness with each other, and by means of this service, we celebrate it. We celebrate spirit through us, as us, all around us. And by means of this music and the, the presence of, of God and the, the message and everything that goes on in this service is blessed. And each person here receives some gift in consciousness, in mind. It is already done. And I'm grateful for knowing this truth. I'm grateful for the power that makes it so. And so I simply let go, I let God. I know it is done. And please join me in saying. And so it is. And now I'd like to invite Reverend Carla up to share our affirmation and declaration. I invite you to read along with me as we read our Declaration of Principles. And I also invite you to just Feel the words. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon the law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And now, our morning affirmation. Please read with me. I choose to live a kind and compassionate life, honoring all living beings and the planets that sustain them. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Carla. And please welcome Lara Ocean. Good morning. We're going to share a song that I wrote called Heart on Fire.
Sarah. Beautiful, beautiful. Love is my quest, love is all of our quest, because God is love and we're here because we are on that quest to have a greater, deeper relationship with the one. And um, my message today is living by choice, living by choice. And um, of course, that is, that is the conscious way to live. I've been spending the week um, with these wonderful little kittens. Now they're, now they're 11 weeks old, 11.25 weeks or 52 weeks old, and they still haven't come and sat in my lap. They still won't let me touch them. They scoot, they scoot. They're very good scooters. But they also are very, very curious and they have explored so many places. Um, I found a poem that is from a cat's point of view, and it says, it says simply this. I know I can jump to the top of that shelf. I know I can jump to the top of that shelf. I am jumping to the top of the shelf. I didn't make it. <laughs> Why did they continue making China things? Oh. <laughs> That's the cat's life. That's from the cat's point of view. Why did they make China things? Because China things break when they were at the top of the shelf. My cats have gone absolutely everywhere except in my lap. I figure eventually they just have to get there. But the one thing is that they love chords. They love, love, love to play with chords. So I, you know, I know when parents are, have that toddler, you baby proof your house. Well, I have to kitty proof mine. And it's really hard because they are so fascinated by anything plugged in. And I don't know about your house, but everything's plugged in. All of my computer stuff, my, my iPad, my phone, my watch, everything is plugged in. And they can get to most of those plugins, and then they want to chew on the cord. <laughs> now, I have a really great story about that, and I'm so glad I do because as soon as I saw them, with that knocked my little speakers from my computer onto the floor and were chewing on them. And, no, this won't work. I remember a story. I did. Uh, I took a retreat from. Reverend Kathy Ann Lewis up in Seattle area. She was doing this retreat for her congregation and ministers. And during the retreat, she told us this true story. She had a kitten and she was busy doing what ministers doing. She was writing her talk or working on something. And in the back of her mind, she knew that that kitty was playing somewhere and she could actually hear Bzz, bzz, bzz. And then she realized that was the cat chewing the electrical cord. Oh, no. And by the time it dawned on her consciousness, the kitty was no longer chewing, it was just lying there. And here's the miracle. There's a, a really traditional prayer in science of mind. It's been around, it's very short. It's, God is all there is. I know that God is right here, right now. God is whole, complete, and perfect. I am one with God. God is all there is. I know that God is whole, complete, and perfect. God is right where I am. God is all there is. I know that God is whole, complete, and perfect. God is right where I am. And she was saying this prayer, holding her kitten, and the kitten revived, went, <gasps> jumped away. God is all there is. God is whole, complete, and perfect. See, it's, it's the prayer that is so powerful when we get the idea that truly everything is created by consciousness. There are no exceptions. Everything is created from what we believe. Everything comes about because of what we believe, and maybe even the cat did get electrocuted because of what she believed in the first place, because she said in the back of her mind, she knew that there was a loose something that the, the cat might be playing with. 
So I want to, you to join me in knowing that my kittens, their names are Buzz and Woody from <laughs> Toy Story. Buzz and Woody are perfectly safe and they either get over their uh, attraction for those kind of cords that are electrical and plugged into something and that they're safe. Because see, we can make anything up. And I've had cats and dogs my whole life, mostly cats, because they travel better. Since, well, they travel because I move a lot and they, all you have to do is feed a cat if they eat in the new place, they're yours, they're there. <laughs> dogs, not so much, there's a lot more you have to do. But anyway, um, what I'm knowing is that this, all of these things being plugged in and being attracted to a cat is just an idea I currently have and it can leave as easily as it came. But those two little creatures are protected by divine love. Love is the reason that they came in the first place. So they're protected, they're whole, complete and perfect. <sighs> whole, complete and perfect right now and always. So living a life of choice means that always we can choose through which lens to view our lives. Are we choosing to see it through the eyes of heart is on fire and love is all there is? Or are we choosing to see it through victim and fear and ain't it awful? Choose love. Choose love. It's way better to be in that place where you are loving, where you are lovable, and where everything you see is through that context, through that place, that all is well and all shall be well. The, my new Buddhist friend, Kusalata Bhiksha, wrote, um, in, on Facebook this last week, he, he wrote about the three gates. So I'm going to say what the three gates are because they're really good things to use when you're deciding if you want to talk about something. Now, these three gates, he's a Buddhist, he's actually a Zen Buddhist, and if you look up the three gates, you get Zen Buddhism, but then you get Sufism. So I don't know who to attribute this to, either it's Sufism or it's Zen Buddhism, but here are the three gates. Before saying anything, the three gates that you should pass through is, first of all, is it true? Is it true? Second of all, is it necessary? And third of all, is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Do you need to say this? So much of the time, um, we're tempted to not be kind. We may even be tempted not to be true, but it makes, to me, it doesn't, that doesn't make sense so much. Because if we're not speaking from the truth, from our truth, then to whomever we're having a conversation with isn't getting the authenticity of the I that I am. You're getting a facade, a, a made-up story, something else. But if you're coming from the truth of you, then whatever you say is coming from that place. So is it true? Is it necessary? Well, sometimes it's just necessary because there's an awkward moment socially where no one's saying anything. Actually, that's a very comfortable moment for me. I prefer silence. <laughs> silence is actually really deepening and loving. But, so is it necessary? Is it necessary to say that thing? And then the last one, is it kind? Is it kind? We have a choice. We can choose to be kind. We can choose to be loving. We can sh choose to um, let that be our life. And you know, choices are simply that. They're powerful. 
A choice is a choice. It's, there's not so much about this is a good thing and this is a bad thing, but this is a thing and this is another thing. They're choices. That's all. Is vanilla ice cream better than chocolate ice cream? <laughs> This is a choice. Chocolate ice cream better than vanilla ice cream. See, it, they're choices, that's all. Um, I was shopping the other day and people were going into the store as I was going in, overheard them talking, and one of them said, should I get something for dessert? And the other one said, oh no, we've got fruit. The other one said, yeah, that's great. I would have said in the past we could get some chocolate cake and ice cream, <laughs> but now I'm saying fruit. So uh, maybe a healthier choice, that, then I couldn't hear what they said next, but should I get some dessert? It's a choice. Dessert isn't good or bad, fruit isn't good or bad, vegetables aren't good or bad, they're just choices. They're just choices. So to live a meaningful life is mean, means you're making choices that are for your highest and best good making choices of love, making choices of freedom, choices of empowerment. And um, I'm so grateful for this teaching, for the science of mind. Has anyone ever had their life changed by this teaching? Oh, yeah. Okay, a few hands here and there. <laughs> Almost every hand could go up if you were really telling the truth because this is a powerful, powerful teaching that um, many people, when they first come, um, will be struck by something. Something will hit the person listening in the heart. I know certainly when I fr first heard my no first New Thought message, um, it was the minister's husband's prayer that moved me so deeply, and there were tears of recognition, this is my new place. I knew, because of how he prayed. And then she came on, and she is, I was arguing with her in my head. I know that there are people that do get that here with the science of mind, even though it's totally rational and totally logical and a wonderful message, but when you first begin, it may seem far-fetched. It may seem, well, that's, Possibly true, but not how she said that, like the cat couldn't have come back to life. It did. It did. I totally, you meet Kathy Ann Lewis. She's a woman of authority. And you will believe that if she said it, it's the truth. It's the truth. Now, I didn't meet that cat. I can't say that I met the cat that revived from the being um, electrocuted by this frayed uh, cord. But I do know of Kathy Ann and know that she's a powerful, clear teacher of the science of mind. And speaking of that, I know many of you are uh, in Reverend Heron's class and many of you are enrolled for Rev Reverend Dr. Um, Roger Julene's class. I want to talk about my class a bit. My class, Quick Start to Spiritual Living, is a class that was created by Marcia Sutton. Marcia Sutton is the person that uh, has worked with many, many, many uh, churches and individuals, and her work now has been bequeathed to uh, Reverend Penny Masick. And all, many of you know Reverend Dr. Penny Masick. It's really great work. And what Marcia did, she took the science of mind. She said, we need to be able to look at it as um, something that we can visually see as well as something that we can easily practice. So what I'm teaching is called the quick start to religious science or spiritual living. And it is all about what it is we believe, how life gets to be the way it gets to be, and how we can look at the process as being that same process is used all the time by everyone, whether they know it or not. All the time by everyone. So she calls it the coach to everywhere. How do we get there from here? Well, this is how you get there. So 
That's what we'll be doing. We'll be talking about working together, exploring and practicing the science of mind, which the science of mind and spirit is about understanding first and foremost that God is all there is everywhere present. And just as many kinds of matter take various forms, like think of water, did you think of liquid, did you think of solid, or did you think of steam? All of it is H2O, right? It's just different forms. It's the same thing with when we're talking about God being all there is. Yes, and God is in various forms. God is in the universal presence. God is in the invisible, and God is in the physical. God in the physical is you. God in the physical is me. It's all of us. It's this beautiful universe that we enjoy. It's everything, everything and everywhere present. So it'll be so clear to you when you've taken the course, but the course is really for people who haven't taken any science of mind classes or if you took them, didn't understand them. That's who it's for. <laughs> really, it is. And there are people like that, I know, and there are people that don't come to class because they didn't have a good time in school and they think school is <coughs> scary, a scary place to be, whoa, school. So it's for those people. It's for the people that just want to understand this thing in an easy way. So if that's you, sign up. I just want you to sign up so I have enough materials. If I don't have enough materials, you're not going to get as much out of it. Okay. This Back to the life of choice. I've been speaking this last month about Ray Kinton, and he is the guy who was on death row for 30 years. 30 years on death row. 30 years, and he is a person that learned to live a life of choice. And he chose purposely to up-level his abilities. He purposely chose to learn to speak better. He purposely chose to find compassion in his heart for his fellow inmates. At first, he thought, what am I doing in a place like this? I am innocent, and these other people are clearly guilty. But for the first three years, what was going on in his mind was so murderous. He was so angry at the system, so angry for being incarcerated and uh, condemned to death, that he couldn't see anything but anger for those people that were responsible for him and therefore toward everybody. But after the third year, he awakened to the awareness that he was being just like they thought he was. He was becoming the murderer that they had condemned him for being because he was blaming the, you know, the DA and, and the, the witness that um, swore that he's, it was him, even though he was in a totally different place. He chose. So my, my point is that if he, uh, in, in solitary, on death row for 30 years, can change his mind, it should be pretty easy for the rest of us. <laughs> It should be, we're not, we're here. We're able to come and go. We're able to make all sorts of choices that he wasn't able to make. But he chose to change his mind and to see the good in people and doing that, by him practicing that, even the guards were wanting to him to be found innocent and released because he had changed his mind so deeply and so powerfully that it was clear. People were asking me um, what happened and how did he get out because the state kept saying, no, this man is guilty and we, we, we 
you're not going to reopen the case. It went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court didn't actually, they didn't, this is the Supreme Court, I guess they could do whatever they want, but they weren't supposed to be dis determining his fate. They were just supposed to determine that there was enough evidence that it could go back to the state and be retried. And because it was almost 30 years, those nine justices unanimously <coughs> said, no, he's innocent. We don't need to retry it. It doesn't need to go back to the state. We, we're the supreme lawgivers here. It's done. And that was right action. That was right action. He was released. I can look back at my life and go, yeah, I made some really good choices, and I made some really silly choices as well. I think we could all do that. But to realize that always I had a choice, even in the muck and mire of things, I had a choice. So do you. So let your heart open with the love of God that is in it. And when your heart is open with the love of God and you speak from that place, everything changes for the good and for the bad. All is well and all shall be well. And so it is. So it is. So it is. I know that that is God's life, that life is whole, complete, and perfect, and that life is my life, right here, right now. I know that this awareness, this that I know, is the greatest thing on earth, or in the entire universe, that I could know. For it is the point of power, that point of awareness, that all things are subject to this one power, everywhere present. It is the creative process, both in the universal and the individual. It is that divine love that brings together and keeps together those that belong to be together. It is that, ah, that wholeness that eliminates disease and shows the true causation, whole, complete, perfect in all times. It is the source of all life, and it is right here, in and through and as me now. I let go of any resistance to anything. I let go of my need to control, and I simply say yes to the next right idea, to the next activity, to the next action. I know that my choices are filled with the power and presence of the divine. I choose wisely. I choose from that place of oneness. And from that place of oneness, the entire universe shines in its golden beauty and its truth. It begins with me. I love myself enough to use those three gates every time I speak, especially when I'm talking to myself. I'm so grateful for knowing what I know that I simply place this word in the action of law. I release it. I let it go. And so it is. So it is.
in two parts. We first of all take a moment to read our prosperity affirmation. And just like we did the other affirmations, knowing that we mean it, and then we take a few seconds of gratitude, just of silence to be grateful. And then that's followed by us singing together and then <laughs> Diane is going to do something to uh, help cement this. Okay. Please join me. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply.
I'd like to acknowledge those of you who are in service today or have been this week. If that's you, please stand so we can give you a lot of love. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do, all that you give. We're so blessed by you. And then uh, who is remaining standing are our practitioners oh, yeah. and our practitioner <laughs> interns. <laughs> if you want your life transformed, make an appointment with one of these people. You'll be so happy you did. Today, um, uh, in service, we have Joanne Leone, Reverend Judy Chapman, and Reverend Carla Sharadis. And our interns will both be with, so, so that doesn't mean they have a client. That means stop by and check it out. Have a mini session, you'll be so happy you did. Let's acknowledge our practitioners. <laughs> if you're visiting us for the very first time today, we have a gift uh, to welcome you and uh, some information about our center. And all you need to do is um, raise your hand or jump up and let us know that's you. Jump up. <laughs> right over here. Nice room. So happy you joined us today. And we're going to acknowledge you. So everybody, please repeat after me. Welcome to our center. Welcome to our center. We know that you're a whole, complete spiritual being. Know that you're a whole, complete spiritual being. There is nothing to fix. Nothing to fix. Just something to know. Just something to know. We love you. We love you. So, yes. If you fill in the welcome card in that little bag and take it to the bookstore, you'll receive another gift. Well, we have visitors from afar. Good. I see you have all found your new assigned seats on the coach. Dobre utro. Come, come, I teach you this yesterday. Say, dobre, dobre utro. utro. Dobre utro. Dobre utro. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, now that we have made it to St. Petersburg, we will have a local guide called Natasha. Everyone say, Dobre utro, Natasha. Dobre utro, Natasha. Dobre utro, my little friends. And welcome to my home, the greatest city in the world, St. Petersburg. Here on the left, you can see the bronze horseman our most famous statue of the city founder, Peter I, also known as Peter the Great, whom we named St. Petersburg after. Many of you may know that the city was renamed Leningrad in 1924 after the death of Vladimir Lenin. It was renamed back to St. Petersburg in 1991 after the dissolution of Soviet Union. I still like name Leningrad better. Yes. But citizens voted overwhelmingly to change back to St. Petersburg. Lenin was a great man. Okay. You can see him when tour gets to Moscow. He is waiting for you, Zeb. This morning we will see some of the sights of St. Petersburg and return to the coach at noon for a comfort stop. You will also have free time from 12 to 12.30 for consciously connecting with your fellow tourists to discuss what you experienced this morning. Then at 12.30, you will have opportunity to see medium Jennifer Krieg at the Cathedral for Spiritual Living. She will be here for one hour to connect with your loved ones in spirit world to bring message of hope and healing. Also, we have sandwiches. As you know, during Soviet times, most churches were not used as places of worship. The Cathedral for Spiritual Living was used as warehouse for tractor parts, but has now been returned to previous splendor. After lunch, I will collect your optional excursion forms. So now we will tell you about these optional excursions. Did you know the average Russian says niet 86 times per day? Niet. <laughs> this week at Ben Space Wisdom, you can find out why. Our comrade David Friedman will present What Do You Mean Niet? <laughs> Here on the right, you can see the Church of Our Savior on the Spilled Blood. Those of you wanting to have a true communist experience of sharing your blood with your comrades, 
we will host a Red Cross. Make a note that is the Red Cross. Blood Drive this Thursday from 10 to 4 in multi-purpose room. And therefore, shifting sands will not be needed. But instead, we will have potluck of regional favorites at home of Charlie Summer. On Tuesday evening, many of you have already signed up for ballet. The rest of you might be interested in attending accredited class Exploring the Roots of Science of Mind, given by Karen the Great. Who takes his class, you talk to her. Starting this Thursday, 25 July, Reverend Dr. Roger Julie will present an eight-week accredited class Igniting Your Life with Bible Wisdom, devoted to the spiritual wisdom found in the parables of Jesus. During Soviet times, KGB would ignite people who tried to teach this Bible wisdom. I do not think this is what he means. It will meet Thursday evenings from 6.30 to 9.30. You sign up on kiosk. For those of you not getting wake-up calls early enough in morning, Dr. Heather will be facilitating a spiritual living quick start class on Sunday 28th of July and Sunday 4 of August. This teaches basic party principles of science of mind and is presented on love offering basis. They also sign up on kiosk. On your right, you can see part of the Petterhof Palace Gardens. This particular arrangement is dedicated from Archduke Grant McFay to celebrate birth and life of favorite wife, Rita McFay. <laughs> Now marching in on Nevsky Prospect, our youngest leaders of our cosmonaut training program. <laughs>